Um, me and my colleague Pranav, who's also um, joined on this call, will go through a quick presentation on our company. Um, what we do um, through our company EMOS in Europe and what we've been doing in India uh, over the last one, one and a half year in terms of retrofitting. <clears throat> and uh, my colleague will also uh, go through some of the exact details of what it what it is uh, when we say retrofitting, what exactly do we do? So uh, let me share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see this? Yes, uh, maybe making a full screen would be better. Yeah, I have it on full screen now. Uh, yeah, now I can see. Okay, right. Um, so like you said, Shritu, um, just a quick background of our company. Uh, my name is Karan Shah. I'm executive director of the company. Uh, our company, the Precision Group, we're based in India, and we are predominantly uh, a, a component manufacturer, really, for the automotive industry. Uh, we're doing a variety of camshafts, uh, balancing shafts, injector parts, etc., uh, and we're supplying to essentially every OEM uh, around the world, right from North America, South America, Europe, uh, all of Asia, uh, etc. So we've been in this business for the last 25, 30 years or so. Uh, and the reason, uh, don't want to go into too many details of that today, but one of the companies that we acquired three years ago is this company EMOS in the Netherlands, uh, which is a complete solution provider for electric drive lines for heavy equipment. Uh, and when I say heavy equipment, we work on vehicles, equipment, uh, or other uh, use cases for electrification from say five tons of gross weight all the way up to 50 tons. Uh, and I'll show you some examples of what exactly we do. Um, so like I said, uh, we produce uh, zero emission power systems and that's, uh, we work in very niche applications most of the times. Um, our company is based in Oosterhout, which is about <clears throat> 45 minutes west of Amsterdam. Um, and this company has been around for more than 10 years now. So it's not really a startup by any, uh, by any means. Um, we have about, this, this is a slightly older slide, we have now about 65 uh, full-time employees uh, at the company. Uh, and this company has a real uh, deep history in, in electrification of vehicles, and I'll show you some of that going forward. Uh, but at this point of time, we are servicing clients all around the world. Uh, our main focus, obviously, is Europe since we're based there. Uh, but the United States, uh, some parts of Australia and New Zealand are also where we supply our um, electric driveline kits, uh, which, again, I'll show you some more examples. Uh, so the history of this company, like I said, has been around for a very long time. Um, the, the, our current CTO, uh, who is still very much with the company, was the original founder of the company, uh, who started with the development of a, a single reduction uh, gearbox for Tesla uh, back in the day, uh, and has since worked on electrification of a variety of different vehicles. You see right from passenger cars to small transit vehicles to the, you know, the 12 ton, 15 ton trucks. Uh, and then over the last few years, uh, even the higher tonnage uh, vehicles. <clears throat> in 2018, it, the company was fully acquired 100% by uh, the Precision Group. And we now lead the development of this company, not only in Europe, uh, but obviously trying to get this technology uh, to India, which is a very, uh, I would say, nascent market compared to Europe in terms of electrification. And I think the context of India and what we have been doing there uh, would be relevant, I think, uh, also to the Nepal context, so which is why uh, we thought we would present here today. So our key products, the two things that we do most of the time, uh, one is the retrofitting. And when I say that, um, typically a fleet owner uh, or a company that has large fleet or small or large fleet of uh, commercial vehicles uh, would come to us and we would basically convert one of uh, uh, con convert these vehicles one at a time in our plant in, uh, in Oosterhout. Uh, Pranav will go into a little bit more detail on exactly what we do and how long it takes and things like that. But this is the typical retrofitting model. Uh, we, we have, while we continue to do this, and it, it, is a, it is a large part of our business, we are now also focusing quite a bit on uh, the kit set model, where we work with very specific niche OEMs across Europe. Uh, these are the final, um, uh, I would say, the, the equipment builders or the vehicle builders themselves, the original equipment uh, manufacturers. And they would typically, uh, these OEMs would typically build uh, their specialty vehicles from scratch in their own plants. 
and then use a use an engine or a combustion engine from say a Fiat or a Daimler or whatever uh, to power their vehicles. Uh, what we do instead now is we provide them a complete driveline kit, which includes the battery pack, the motors, all the electronics, the wiring harnesses, right down to the nut and bolt uh, with a manual, uh, where the, the customer can buy the kit set from us and install it in their, in their plants uh, on their vehicles, so that these vehicles are no longer retrofitted, but they're really uh, electric from day one. So these are the two key, uh, two key products that we deal with. Um, and while doing so, we do not only pure battery electric, which is just powered on uh, the battery, but we also do some range extended versions where we have a small generator uh, IC or an, a small uh, sub one liter IC engine, which is fitted onto the vehicle, uh, especially in heavy duty applications. And this, this engine is actually powering uh, or charging the batteries, not really driving uh, the, the, the wheels of the vehicle, but really charging the batteries. So yeah, when, when it comes to a new vehicle that we intend to do for a new customer, uh, we typically say that it takes one year from an idea uh, that we want to start electrifying a particular truck or a particular bus or a particular vehicle uh, to actually getting it running on the road, uh, fully homologated, going through all the regulatory process and making sure that it has uh, a roadworthiness certificate, if I may say. Uh, and it takes that one year to do the first one right. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have all the quality checks in place, uh, all the safety standards uh, applied there. And only then can we go into more of a serial kind of uh, production where then we can we, we can do multiple vehicles. Uh, you know, we can do retrofitting of vehicles uh, in say a period of three to four weeks once we have done one correctly. Uh, and then uh, the kit set obviously is much faster because we are only building the sets in our in our plant and then shipping these out. So uh, this is just a short uh, kind of uh, glimpse of what we've been doing. I already mentioned this. We do five tons to 50 tons. We do these ready to assemble kits. Um, and this, in summary, we have about 600 vehicles that we have electrified over the last, I would say, five years. Um, and we continue to do a significant amount every month now. So the number keeps adding. Uh, and so far, our vehicles or vehicles with our drive lines. Uh, have driven over 100 million miles, uh, especially in Europe. So we have a lot of that data uh, to kind of say, um, when we design a new driveline, when we have a new uh, use case application, how do we design for that use case? Uh, and we have this tremendous amount of data to kind of drive those decisions. Um, before we get into what exactly we do when it comes to retrofitting, just a few examples of typical customers that we have. Uh, this is a, a road sweeper company um, in Europe where they build the vehicle along with the road sweeper and everything. Uh, and we supply them kits uh, for completely electrifying their road sweeper, including all the mechanisms for cleaning. Uh, we have this company in New Zealand where uh, we, we only supply, this is a retrofitting case, so we supply them with kits, uh, but we have trained we have trained the local team so well uh, at waste management in new zealand that actually they are able to do the conversions now or they are able to do the retrofitting themselves uh, with us only supplying them uh, the initial kits um this is a very cool application that uh, we have been working on for the last <clears throat> say two years and it's actually going into a serious production now or serious numbers now uh, this is a company based in uh, northern, I think, Scandinavia, Sweden. Yeah, and uh, this it's a co completely autonomous truck. It's a it's a 50 ton truck, which is uh, fully autonomous and fully electric. Uh, so Einride does the elect uh, the autonomous technology and the building of the vehicle, etc. Uh, and we do the complete electrification of such a vehicle. And it's um, it has taken significant amount of time to come to a stage where a company like Emos can provide a, a real um, high class, high quality solution for a for a company like Einride, where they're able to apply these trucks between, say, warehouses or within ports or uh, even close distances in Sweden, uh, completely uh, electric and completely autonomous. <clears throat> this is an example of a typical uh, passenger bus that we do in the UK, uh, where we electrify uh, the bus. We we they are building the bus from ground up, and we typically supply them the kit, and they are assembling it into their uh, vehicle in their own plant. So, 
this and uh, this is a, a re very recent project that we did of a retrofitting it's a i think it's a uh, 20 ton 20 ton vehicle which or a 14 ton vehicle uh, which we just retrofitted uh, for dhl in in the netherlands so uh, in short i think that was a summary of uh, what we do who are our typical customers and what kind of projects we do uh, and we have I, before I go into what, what we have been doing in India, um, I will let Pranav take over for a bit and um, go through some of the details on what exactly we do in terms of retrofit, retrofitting. So Pranav, I hand it to you. Hi, uh, this is Pranav. Uh, I am taking care of engineering and sales on the India for EMOS on the India side of things. So essentially, when we talk about retrofitment, uh, what really is retrofitment, right? Retrofitment for uh, high, uh, high, uh, heavy commercial vehicles or commercial vehicles for general is very different than what the general idea is. So when we take a vehicle in for retrofitment, it we completely break down uh, the process in terms of uh, in four parts. One is the data collection, one is design finalization, then is integration, and then it is testing and roll off. So for vehicle data collection, we collect, uh, so if we want to do retrofitting right, there's a lot of data that needs to be collected even before the parts are decided. And that's not what typically what a lot of the companies are doing in terms of, uh, uh, and I'm referring to companies getting kits from China and then just retrofitting them to vehicles and selling them. So what we essentially do is Take the take the baseline, uh, take the base vehicle in. We do all kinds of testing with the vehicle in terms of uh, baseline data collection. What kind of ho uh, horsepower? What kind of torque is actually able to generate? Uh, we collect all the CAD data so that we are able to design all the brackets, everything specifically for that vehicle. We collect the CAN uh, CAN matrix, uh, the control area network uh, data, uh, to so that we are able to replicate certain signals that are uh, that are on the base vehicle. After all of these data is collected, our team analyzes the data. And on the basis of that data, uh, we do the powertrain design finalization. We, we also, so what we as EMOS also offer is customization to some extent, right? So if a certain customer has a request in terms of gradability or there's some other request, we can also grandfather that in into the driveline. So, uh, so all of this data is collected along with certain requests from the customer, if at all, and then the powertrain design finalization process begins. Uh, then we go to sourcing and then uh, the integration phase starts. So in the integration phase, uh, it's not only mechanical integration, but we write our own software for the vehicle control unit. Uh, we write our own software for the battery management system and uh, the interaction between those two softwares is completely controlled by us. Uh, and uh, of course, the mechanical integration, all the parts that are sourced from vendors, they are put in, we write our software on top of it. Uh, and then comes the calibration and the testing phase. So uh, what we aspire to is that our vehicle should perform much better than what the base vehicle was, or at worst, it should perform equal. So that uh, uh, rigorous amount of testing is done uh, by us before roll off, and we take care of the homologation aspect of the vehicle as well. So what really changes uh, in a retrofitted vehicle, right? So uh, uh, what we change is, uh, the, of course, the motor changes, but along with that, there are a lot of auxiliary uh, auxiliary components that need to change in a, a heavy commercial vehicle. For example, the steering pump, the brake pump, all of these pumps uh, typically run on an engine, but since the engine is no longer there, these pumps that run or derive power from the engine uh, need, to be, uh, need to be switched out for electric pumps. So all of those need to be changed. Of course, the transmission. Since the mating of the transmission, the flange does not meet the original. We, uh, we have, for, uh, for all vehicles over 25 tons, we have our own uh, customary uh, 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 transmission from our uh, partners. And of course, the high voltage battery. Uh, there's another model of uh, retrofitment uh, that is uh, relatively new, but it's uh, gaining steam full speed uh, that is called remanufacturing. So essentially, uh, uh, especially in the Asian markets, you can really buy chassis from an OEM. So uh, if, if in a particular vehicle segment, 
a customer wants uh, an el electric vehicle, but it's not really offered by an OEM, but he doesn't have his own vehicle. What we also provide is we buy the chassis from the OEM, uh, we add an electric driveline to it, and then we get the body built on top with our uh, bodybuilding partners, and then we deliver the uh, deliver the vehicle. And it can be it can have n number of auxiliaries, n number of customizations. For example, this this particular vehicle has a trash compactor auxiliary on top. So that level of customization across the board is really possible uh, with us. Really, why 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 should one retrofit? So there's there was this one really interesting paper. Uh, written by Mr. Chakraborty along with his partner last year, in fact. Uh, so he has uh, he has very elaborately shown us how the total cost of ownership per kilometer is uh, calculated for uh, an electric bus. And he has taken examples of an electric bus with equivalent uh, diesel engine, uh, uh, diesel buses, as well as CNG buses. And what really this study showed is at the current market price of electric vehicles as well as diesel vehicles, the total cost of ownership metrics only start making sense if the price of the base electric vehicle that is currently selling is reduced by 60%. Only then will the total cost of ownership start making sense. So yeah, so let's take an example uh, where this electric bus costs, uh, and this is in uh, Indian rupee terms, of course, uh, is uh, 1.75 crores. Uh, equivalent diesel engine bus costs about 56 lakh rupees. Uh, there's a drastic delta in terms of total cost of ownership per kilometer. But what Mr. Chakraborty says in his paper, the total cost of ownership at a 60% 60, uh, 60 reduction in the initial cost, uh, and that can be through subsidy, through N number of reasons, or through technology R&D. Once there's a 60% reduction in the initial purchase price of the electric bus, then the total cost of ownership per kilometer over a, over a span of, say, 75,000 kilometers will be equal to the diesel engine bus. And that's, that's really the inflection point. And what we offer with the retrofitted bus here is, is exactly that, a 60% reduction for you to be able to drive an electric bus. And I, I, I completely agree that uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a base vehicle that needs to be added, but these base vehicles typically when we work with customers for retrofitment are written off vehicles where they have reached really the end of their life cycle. And we just, uh, and they, so the option to the customer at that point is either to buy a new diesel engine vehicle or to get their current vehicle retrofitted. So at that point, our vehicle really starts making sense. Uh, so for these, uh, so for our foray into the Indian market, uh, what the Indian market really needed was a touch and feel product, uh, something that we needed to test in the Indian conditions because European conditions and Indian conditions have a huge delta. So what we did was actually retrofitted a, a diesel engine bus in India, and that is currently flying on Indian roads and it's, uh, it's under testing and we are collecting all sorts of data with respect to temperatures, cell voltages, gradeability, et cetera, uh, top speed, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, we find uh, the, uh, a drastic operating cost uh, reduction uh, in uh, this diesel engine bus. Uh, this is this bus we are able to run at about three uh, three point five rupees or three point six rupees per kilometer, which is drastically less as compared to what it was before. Uh, so I think Mr. Shah will talk about our localization efforts in India and what we've been able to achieve. And uh, he will also talk a, a little bit more about what we intend to do in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Kanav. So I'll go back one slide also. I think I just want to touch base a little bit more on what we've been doing in India. Um, so obviously for us, um, we have some bus applications that we have done in Europe, and it would be fairly simple to just pull a bus over from there, bring it to India and try to say that, you know, this is a vehicle that can be sold here uh, but two of the biggest factors um, which would not allow that was basically to make sure that in the future can we actually do the retrofitting ourselves in India number two can we find good quality suppliers in India who can support uh, and who can support the retrofitting and supply uh, the supply chain uh, and the third actually is also the commercial front because without uh, really a lot of localization being done in India and a, a lot of the cost drivers being um, reduced, uh, it would be almost impossible to have a, a viable, a commercially viable solution for the Indian market. So 
Uh, we have a team of about seven or eight people now in India who, uh, of course, we depend and we rely on our European team for the research and development and for the engineering expertise. Uh, but the actual physical uh, um, supply chain development as well as integration onto this force traveler vehicle has all been done in India over the last one year. Uh, and we've got uh, just in this very first vehicle, 52% uh, of parts have already been uh, localized in India, which is actually 60% uh, in terms of value of the bill of material, if you may say. So in the very first vehicle, we were able to find very good suppliers in India uh, who could provide us with uh, the, whether the electronic components, the battery packs uh, and, other, and other very critical uh, parts. Um, obviously going forward, we would, uh, we intend to have more than 80% localization uh, when we're, we're dealing with uh, uh, increased volumes. I think on the charging front, I heard a little bit of the previous conversation, but we do have uh, good charging partners um, in India as well. Uh, there's a company, EO Chargers, who we uh, partner with for uh, AC charging. And then we have uh, Tata Autocom that does uh, DC charging solutions for us. And we are happy to kind of provide this as a packaged product with, um, with, with the vehicle or with the retrofitting services that we do. So um, what is it that we are planning to uh, do in the future? I think we do have a lot of e-bus um, and e-truck projects that um, uh, we, are, we, we are working with and uh, dealing with a lot of the state transport um, authorities as well as corporate clients to do conversions of their existing uh, e uh, buses or trucks. Uh, one of the biggest markets that we see in India for electrification is actually the uh, light commercial vehicles uh, and purposely blurred out here in this image because uh, we are still uh, in the process of developing a, a, a really, um, you know, 100% uh, electric LCV for this Indian market. <clears throat> and we, we are already in touch with, you know, a lot of the large players uh, who use hundred thousand, uh, hundreds and thousands of these uh, vehicles for last mile mobility. Uh, and the plan, of course, in the future would be deputization in India, uh, without which uh, a lot of this which is planned uh, would not be possible. So I think um, with that, uh, I will stop uh, my presentation.